Hi, I'm Tony Williams and this is Brooklyn Savvy. We're going to be talking about volunteerism today with the Chief Service Officer, Diane Billings Burford. Now, you, of course, are working with Mayor Bloomberg's staff, but we're going to get to you. But I first want to introduce our Savvy panel. We have Ellen Saulpeter, Colette Ellis, and Denise Arbasu. So thank you so much, Diane, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, I want to... I have a personal question. What does it feel like to be the first chief service officer in any municipality mm -hmm. and also to be an African-American woman? Talk to us about the significance of this. Um, well, you know, Mayor Bloomberg launched NYC Service in 09 in response to President Obama's call for a new era of service. Mm -hmm. And we felt like NYC Service was New York City's answer to our president Mm -hmm. and said if a city was going to be involved in service, here is how we would do it most effectively. So I think stepping into this role was, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. It was a challenge sure. because there was this pressure to get it right. Um, but about three months in, I said to the mayor, it's only nice to say I'm the nation's first chief service officer for so long. Right now, I'm the only. Um, oh, and so, okay, okay, right. And okay. so, um, at six months in, to his credit and to the credit of many of the people at City Hall, we um, we went to Rockefeller Foundation, and the Rockefeller Foundation founded, uh, funded rather, the first, the next ten chief service officers across the city, and we had more than. 50 cities apply. They all have wonderful applications. They were so good that Bloomberg Philanthropies then matched Rockefeller Philanthropies. Oh, yeah. He's very my word. Yeah. Yes. And so we had another 10. And so now we actually are up to more than 30 chief service officers Excellent. across the city and more than 100 cities that have signed on. Um, and most of them are actually funded now by their city or by their municipality and not by outside funding. Now, what about your background made you, you know, I don't want to use the word qualify at all, but made you uniquely positioned for a position like this? Well, I like to think, mm -hmm. um, and I, I, 8 million people fit into this category, mm -hmm. but I like to think the first thing is that I'm a New Yorker. Okay. Um, I born think it's born and bred. Okay. I'm a Brooklyn yeah. girl. Transplant. Are you a transplant? Yeah. Oh, no, you're all right. So, okay. So, you just mean to be a transplant. Yeah. <laughs> born and bred, Brooklyn, Clinton Hill, Brooklyn, mm -hmm. um, has been home forever. Um, and so, I think, I actually do think that's part of it. I think whoever filled this role the first time had to understand New Yorkers and how mm -hmm. we think, what motivates mm -hmm. us, what will get us to step out and, and be that's altruistic. The of New York right. City. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I, you know, I also think I have a great faith and mm -hmm. I believe, I believe in my religion, but I also believe in people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing that I constantly said to the mayor is New Yorkers will give. Mm -hmm. New Yorkers will give you whatever you really ask for as long as it's going to have an impact. What they won't do is waste. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so, well, that's fair. Yeah. yeah right. right? Yeah. And so we work very hard at NYC service to make sure when we're asking people for their time. Um, for their talent, for their skills, whatever we're asking them for, I can show you the impact that that's going to have because I'm not asking you to waste. And I think mm -hmm. when you get over that hump, New Yorkers will step up and they have stepped up and they'll do almost anything that you ask them for. Hmm. I also think it's really great that, you know, the mayor and his administration have had such an uh, important role in using technology right. to get the word out and to actually organize things from 311 to everything else. Yeah. And so I think your timing was really good too, kind of saying like we can use the social networks Absolutely. to actually right. get to get people to volunteer across age and time and, and class, which right. was really important. And also to track the results, right? Isn't right. that important? Yeah. Sure. That you need right. to show that you have the benchmarks in place, you have the, you know, the whole Absolutely. process. Yeah. What Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say absolutely. Our largest initiative, which is a national service, um, an AmeriCorps program, the New York City Civic Corps, mm -hmm. um, without technology, I'm not sure we would be as able to show our impact. So we literally have a database that all of the all of our host sites, we take AmeriCorps members and we don't keep them at City Hall. Mm -hmm. We put them into not-for-profit mm -hmm. and city agencies to build volunteerism across our city. Uh, we think that's, that is the most effective way to do it from a grassroots perspective. Um, 
And all of those organizations are literally able to put in monthly their impact numbers, their results, their data, and we're able to receive it. So in addition, you know, you're absolutely right. In addition to being able to reach out via social media, the technology that we have now has allowed us to really be able to measure and be help hold ourselves accountable. Well, I, right. oh, that's a really interesting thing because all we hear um, in the nonprofit sector and across government and even in the for-profit sector is measuring impact and, mm -hmm. right. and the metrics are different. Yeah. Often for, you know, it's easy when you're, not easy, but when you're a banker, it's a financial metric. Right. But when you're, it's like, when you, met, when you measure impact in a different yeah. way, right. it must be really interesting. Because it's not how many volunteers did you sign up, because if they're not actually having an impact, right. it doesn't matter. Right. Mm -hmm. You we know, I'd love to hear about your, your thinking on impact and how it's measured. Well, we use the term, I keep it simple for each of our partners in our 22 initiatives. I use the term, so what? If you can't, <laughs> if you can't keep answering... Right, right, if you can't keep answering right. that question, right. we have a problem, right? right? So we right. collect about three levels of data and one is volunteer engagement numbers, right. which is traditional, right. people have always mm -hmm. done it. Mm -hmm. But you could always say, so what? So what right. 20 people did X, right? right. 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 Who cares? Right. Right. Um, and then the next level of data that we collect is services provided. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that starts digging at the mm -hmm. so what, mm -hmm. but we don't think that's the final so what. The mm -hmm. final um, mm -hmm. level of data that we collect is impact. Um, mm -hmm. I think a, a really great example is our lead environmental initiative is called NYC Cool Roofs. Mm -hmm. And we engage volunteers in mm -hmm. coating rooftops not white to reduce mm -hmm. our carbon footprint. Um, so we, over the past three years, we have engaged more than 1,500 New Yorkers in this activity. That's great, but so what? So what? Um, and we have, but then we also measure. So we get to say, well, those 1,500 New Yorkers have coated more than 3 million square feet of roofing now in New York City. Yeah, and you start right. getting to that right. what, but right. you can still you can say, say, so what? So what? Right. The roof is white. Who gives right. a good gosh darn? Right. So. Right. Um, but we're really excited that we now have partnered with a number of people who are studying this. And we, we started off uh, with people from Columbia University who were interested in this and with the U.S. Um, Department of Energy who is also engaging in cool rules. And so we're able to literally show the metric tons um, that we have decreased mm -hmm. with the white roofs well, that we excellent. have put up. Right, so it's right. really that's, showing that connection right, between the, the volunteerism right. <laughs> cool and the impact. Right. Right. So, no, I was just saying, and I think that that's also a great model for the nonprofit organizations to sort of follow that strategic model so that they can be thinking about their so what's Absolutely. in Absolutely. each of their sectors. Absolutely. Talk to us about your impact areas. So we mm -hmm. have six of them. Mm -hmm. um, and primarily, I, I love to say this, we have six of them because we think we should be held accountable. We mm -hmm. use taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. And you can, mm -hmm. you, everything about volunteerism is good. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're using taxpayers' money, you need to be able to put a little bit more than good on the table. Right. Uh, we did good. That's great. Um, mm -hmm. That was my money. Um, so, <laughs> the, um, so we have kind of reined ourselves into six impact areas. So we're able to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. We appear mm -hmm. on, the, um, on the website, and you can see how we're doing in our initiatives um, all the time. Our six impact areas are education, mm -hmm. environment, mm -hmm. health, emergency preparedness. And then we have two that uh, give a little bit more wiggle room than those others. It's uh, strengthening our communities, which is really activities that are focused on maintaining the quality of life in mm -hmm. our city. Mm -hmm. And we have helping our neighbors in need. Mm -hmm. And that is really about so providing social services. Um, keep in mind that NYC Service was launched around about the time, about a year after Wall Street collapsed. Right. And so right. we recession. knew. So you the deep really, recession. When we people knew. People really hurt. Yes. In terms right. of like needing additional food. They had no, no housing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Whatever impacted them. Exactly. Right. So mm -hmm. we knew we were going to see this increase in social services. And because of the way the city budget works, right. we knew we were going to see our tax revenues and our tax base be impacted mm -hmm. right. that Decreasing fiscal negatively. year. Right. And so right. we knew we'd have lower yeah. traditional resources and an increased reliance. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk about, you know, two areas one education, but before that, emergency preparedness. Mm -hmm. Now, who would have thought that you, you know, were you ready? Were you ready for what happened with Hurricane Sandy? I think we were as ready as you can be mm -hmm. for something mm -hmm. like Sandy. Isn't I think true, um, right? <laughs> one of the things we had to acknowledge is that Sandy was a superstorm, mm -hmm. and we have not seen anything like that, right? This was a perfect storm. If you thought it up, 
It, it, right. It's something out of a movie. Yeah. Well, you right. think it wasn't right. real. The moon and stars and everything came aligned together. Right. <laughs> so really, that's right. what happened. So, <laughs> you know, I think, exactly. a, I think a great example is Con Ed. You, bra you build an 11 foot wall, you think you're great, you get a 13 foot swell. I mean, right. so right. you're like, right. Right. you are, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you are literally as prepared, prepared as you can be. I think we were as prepared as we could be. Diane, if you could hold that thought, we will be right back.